so children we had started with volcanic eruptions we completed that lesson and today we start with earthquakes so earthquake is also an example of an endogenic force or a uh, and we have studied that endogenic forces are forces which operate from the interior of the earth and they are divided into two broad categories the diastrophic forces and the sudden forces the sudden forces include earthquakes and volcanic eruptions they happen suddenly and instantly they bring about changes on the surface of the earth so an earthquake is defined as a tremor below the surface of the earth which causes shaking of the crust so the earthquakes are caused by the strain in the earth's crust which in turn is a result of a number of factors when the earth's crust is unable to accommodate itself to the strain it results in a sudden release of tremendous energy in the form of sudden violent shocks so a series of shocks that result from the sudden earth movement example along a fault are known as earthquake or the seismic waves these waves spread out from the seismic focus of the earthquake and can cause widespread destruction so children you can take the example if you take a tub of water and if you throw a stone in it you see that small waves or ripples are created around the area where the stone was thrown so in the same way from the focus the point of origin of the earthquake the seismic waves also travel in different directions so let us study about the causes of the earthquake so the first cause is volcanic eruptions and volcanic earthquakes these are usually caused by gas explosions the eruption and explosion of both the volcano and earthquake may be simultaneous or separated by brief intervals so the intensity of the earthquake may be very high near the volcano and the best example is the violent eruption of the krakatoa volcano which caused a severe earthquake and its impact was experienced as far as cape horn and the dust and the ash it generated took a year to settle down and it also set up innumerable tsunamis which killed over thousands of people in java and sumatra so volcanic eruptions are one of the main causes of earthquakes during the volcanic eruptions hot gases are pushed upward and they push violently the earth's crust surface causing earthquake so volcanic activities and seismic occurrences or earthquakes are interrelated an earthquake generally follows a volcanic eruption and sometimes a volcanic eruption follows an earthquake so this is an important cause of earthquakes the second important cause of earthquake is plate tectonics so according to the plate tectonics theory the earth's crust is made up of a series of tectonic plates and these plates they move or slide over each other in response to the convection in the upper mantle so as these plates move they grind with each other and they result in earthquakes so the tectonic plates are slowly moving but they get stuck at the edges due to friction when the stress on the edge overcomes the friction there is an earthquake that releases energy in waves as you can see in the picture that travel through the earth's crust and cause the shaking that we feel now these plates are constantly on the move though their movement is very slow for example the indian plate moves at a rate of 5 cm per year and you will see that the earthquake and the volcanic zones are roughly the same in those areas of crustal weakness earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are common so in this slide you can see the movement of the plates and you can see the distribution of earthquakes which is represented by yellow triangles and the volcanoes are represented by the 
by this dark pink, magenta color all right so you can see these plates which are constantly moving these are the major plates of the earth now children just for the sake of your knowledge there are three kinds of plate movements the divergent plate movements in which the plates move away from each other as you can see in the first picture the slide the uh, the tectonic plates move away from each other they are called the divergent plate boundaries the second is the convergent plate boundaries the convergent plate boundaries are those in which the plates move towards each other and the third is the transform plate boundary in which the plates slide past each other so children tectonic plates actually include the lithosphere the lithosphere which is divided into a number of major and minor plates the ocean it includes the oceanic crust as well as the continental crust which moves over the mantle the upper mantle that is the asthenosphere so as a result of the plate movements whenever the plates slip past each other or they collide against each other their edges produce faults along the line of weakness so as a result of collision faults are children huge cracks all right big fractures they are faults so whenever these plates they slide past each other or they collide with each other then they result in earthquakes so uh, these earthquakes are immensely powerful they occur in the high risk regions of the pacific ring of southeast asia particularly philippines and indonesia now children in this slide again you can see the explanation of an earthquake so we'll be studying about focus and epicenter but Uh, just for your knowledge focus is the point of origin of the earthquake below the earth's surface and epicenter is the point on the earth's surface vertically above the focus so when these plates move past each other then as a result of the movement stress builds up all right or when they collide with one another again you know because of this collision a lot of stress is created and the stored energy which builds up finally exceeds the strength of the rock and the rock fractures along the fault so when a fault or a huge fracture is created then obviously displacement takes place resulting in an earthquake so the seismic waves they shake the earth as they move through it and when the waves reach the earth surface they cause shaking of the ground now the next cause of earthquake is folding and faulting now uh, we had studied this uh, in the chapter of landforms though it has been deleted from the syllabus so i'll just revise what we had done so children in faulting what happens is that there are different kinds of internal movements if you remember i had told you that there are compressional forces and there are tensional forces now when there are tensional forces the rocks are pulled apart when the rocks are pulled apart a huge fracture is created which is referred to as a fault now when a fracture is created then or a fault is created then obviously the rocks get displaced now when the displacement of rocks takes place this results in earthquake the second is folding now in case of folding what happens is it's a because of compression when the rocks are subjected to compression in which the forces act from two opposite sides towards a common center then what happens is the rocks experience folding like if you take a table cloth and if you push it from two sides you will see folds are created so in the same way when the rocks are subjected to folding uh, compressional forces folding takes place now during the process of folding when the rocks are subjected to folding then because of these compressive forces also earthquake is caused 
Now let us see the man-made causes of earthquake. So human beings are also responsible for disturbing the state of equilibrium or balance in the earth's crust. Now whenever this state of balance is disturbed because there is a state of balance in the interior and the moment this balance is disturbed in order to retain or regain the balance again the earthquakes are caused. So the construction of dams in which huge gallons and gallons of water are stored in the dams this results in earthquakes so storing water in the reservoirs destroys the crustal balance which is responsible for earthquakes for example it is said that in 1960 the koina earthquake in satara district of maharashtra was the result of the koina dam constructed in 1957 okay then the next cause of volcanic eruption is nuclear explosions so if you have seen that movie pokhran you must have seen when the nuclear testing was done how the earth started to vibrate so nuclear explosions also result in earthquakes then the next is blasting so especially in the hilly areas and all when blasting is done blasting of rocks is done they also produce minor tremors then mining also is responsible for earthquakes the mining near the fault zones in which blasting is done so that is also responsible for earthquakes now the chemical waste which are dumped into ground and underground explosions in usa caused several earthquakes in colorado during 1960s now when the earthquake is generated there are three kinds of shock waves which are sent out from the focus of an earthquake and each has its own distinct property the seismic wave paths vary with the density of the rock forming curving patterns as they move away from the focus so there are three kinds of earthquake waves the p waves the s waves and the l waves so we'll study about them right now So the first earthquake waves is the primary or the P waves which can pass through gases liquids and solids the primary waves travel fastest their velocity increases as they pass through the mantle but it drops in the outer core again rises in the inner core due to pressure they are compressional waves so uh they are the particles vibrate in the direction of movement of the wave similar to a sound wave as you can see the picture the second kind of earthquake waves are the secondary or the shear waves or the s waves they travel only through the solids and they cannot penetrate through the dense molten matter these waves travel along curved paths only when these waves travel they meet concentric layers of increasing density which bend or refract the waves towards the surface so they are distortional waves in which the particles vibrate at right angle to the direction of movement of the wave so the s waves travel through the earth's interior but cannot be transmitted by the liquids the last waves the l the surface or the long waves they travel along the surface of the earth and are recorded after p and s waves two types of l waves are identified the love waves and the rally waves so they are very slow waves which travel along the earth surface their motion being vertical or horizontal vibrating horizontally at right angles to the wave direction or like the c waves so children you must know about the two important terms the seismic focus and the epicenter so the seismic focus is the point of origin of the earthquakes or 
or the earthquake waves which are called the seismic waves and they are found below the earth's surface the point on the earth's surface directly above the seismic focus is called the epicenter